first part of menstrual cycle completed with the ovulation now once concentrate let me uh, show you a small uh, graph uh, let me show you a small figure so that you can, you can uh, better understand this is day 0 this is day 28 okay usually menstrual cycle in a female usually it, it will be around 28 days okay now this is the day 14 and the 14th and the day of uh, 14 there is ovulation happened the, there is rupture of the graferian follicle and the oocyte is secondary oocyte is released now the first part of the menstrual cycle what exactly happening in the ovaries follicles are growing and producing the estrogen so can i call the first part of the menstrual cycle as follicular phase yeah follicular phase please no let me hurry first part of the menstrual cycle is known as a follicular phase what is the hormone which is stimulating these follicles it is the it is the fsh okay it is the fsh which is stimulating the follicles now this follicular phase in the ovaries is coinciding with the which phase in the uterus the during follicular phase of the ovaries it is producing the estrogen which brings out the proliferatory changes in the uterine endometrium so the first part of the menstrual cycle there is proliferation of the uterine endometrium okay so i can call the first part of menstrual cycle as even proliferatory phase okay yeah i can call the first part of the menstrual cycle as even proliferatory phase okay well and good in the second half what exactly is happening what happens with the follicle oocyte gone primary oocyte converted to secondary oocyte okay it's a total different story what happens with the follicle this is my follicle which is ruptured the ruptured follicle ruptured graferian follicle will become now corpus luteum okay the ruptured graferian follicle will become corpus luteum okay now what exactly this corpus luteum is doing okay now this corpus luteum produces a hormone known as progesterone okay pro gestational hormone okay progesterone okay it is a pro gestational hormone it is going to be produced from the corpus luteum now guys try to remember like this okay this is a very important concept why there is corpus first of all what exactly is corpus luteum corpus luteum is ruptured graferian follicle so corpus luteum is there because of the rupture of the graferian follicle why the graferian follicle is ruptured graferian follicle is ruptured because of lh so it's the lh responsible for the formation of a corpus luteum okay try to do, try to remember it like this LH causes the rupture of the graphene follicle. Rupture of the graphene follicle will give you the corpus luteum. So, if there is LH, there is corpus luteum. No LH, no corpus luteum. Try to take it as a table. LH maintains the corpus luteum. It's a true statement. In a non-pregnant female. Okay. Now, because of the LH, there is rupture of the graphene follicle and we have the corpus luteum. And now, our corpus luteum is mainly producing our corpus luteum is mainly producing a progesterone apart from progesterone it can also produce a hormone which is estrogen okay it's true corpus luteum even produces the estrogen and even corpus luteum can also produce inhibin a okay let's discuss in detail about everything okay now let's start with the progesterone guys remember it's the corpus luteum which is produce, uh, producing the progesterone it is the follicles in the first phase remember in the folly in the first phase follicles producing estrogen estrogen bringing the proliferatory changes in the uterine endometrium now in the second half of the menstrual cycle it's the corpus luteum producing the progesterones and this progesterone 
will rush into the uterus and in the uterus these progesterones will bring secretory changes secretory changes in uterine endometrium okay so the secretory changes in the uterine endometrium is because of progesterone okay please keep that point in mind okay let's come back to our basics okay let's come back to our basics so that you'll get a more clarity guys remember in the second phase i have already said you in the second phase which is like you know um, luteal phase why it's not luteal phase why because in the second half of the menstrual cycle it's a corpus luteum which is producing the progesterone we will again discuss so second half of the menstrual cycle is known as luteal phase why because it's the corpus luteum which produce progesterone okay corpus luteum which produce progesterone and that progesterone will bring the a secretory changes in the uterine endometrium okay now let's come to our table yeah now progesterone is bringing the secretory changes in the uterine endometrium okay well and good okay now this corpus luteum see it will a produce progesterone okay it's uh, it's going to produce progesterone and that progesterone is going to bring the secretory changes no doubt in that but the maximum amount of progesterone okay or the maximum i can say like this the maximum function of the corpus luteum is seen on eighth day okay maximum progesterone secretion okay maximum progesterone secretion is seen on day 8 after ovulation that is almost equal to 22nd day of menstrual cycle okay so it's almost equal to 22nd day of menstrual cycle you just wait okay so the maximum function of maximum function of the corpus luteum or the maximum secretion of the progesterone is seen on a day 8 after ovulation or 22nd day of a menstrual cycle well and good now next what else you have to keep in mind now this corpus luteum it's growing growing it's producing the progesterone on day 28 sorry on day 8 or day 22nd of the menstrual cycle it's having the maximum production of progesterone but i want you guys to remember what exactly this progesterone is doing what else this progesterone is doing okay this progesterone is also having certain other functions okay let me show you this progesterone is also having certain other functions what are the other functions this progesterone is doing progesterone after ovulation try to concentrate on my words after ovulation will give negative feedback okay negative feedback for fsh and lh what see i have said before ovulation even before ovulation there is lh surge and lh acts on the granulosa cells and lh will produce a progesterone and that progesterone will give the positive feedback okay let me show you see progesterone before ovulation okay progesterone before ovulation is giving a positive feedback for fsh and lh so that before ovulation there is even fsh surge but after ovulation the high quantities of progesterone will give a negative feedback okay will give a negative feedback for fsh and lh release so what happens lh levels okay what happens lh levels decreases so what guys i have already said one key point 
Carpus luteum is maintained by LH. If LH is there, Carpus luteum will be there. If there is no LH, no Carpus luteum. As LH levels are decreasing, now concentrate. As LH levels are decreasing, Carpus luteum undergoes okay, D generation okay as lh levels are going down corpus luteum undergoes degeneration if corpus luteum undergoes degeneration what exactly happens if there is no corpus luteum there is no progesterone so progesterone levels okay progesterone levels decreases so what what exactly happens if there is no progesterone i have already said progesterone is the one which brings the secretory changes in the uterine endometrium if there is no progesterones what happens the secretory endometrium cannot survive so because of this low amount of progesterones what happens there is shedding of uterine endometrium there is shedding of uterine endometrium okay a very very important mcq okay now can i say like this it's the progesterone withdrawal it's the progesterone withdrawal which causes the shedding of uterine endometrium okay now let me show you a uh, image okay let me show you a diagram so that you will get a real idea okay so what exactly we are talking about see this is the uterus okay here you will be having the fallopian tubes okay now here will be the endometrium okay i am talking about the secretory endometrium as because of this progesterone withdrawal the secretory endometrium will be detached from the uterine wall and it will be shedded okay it is shedding but it's not getting expelled out why because once concentrate here the cervix concentrate guys here the cervix is closed so if you want to expel this contents out if you want to expel this contents out you need to open the cervix so for that try to remember it's a very very important point to remember see so shedding of uterine endometrium is because of progesterone withdrawal but expulsion of uterine endometrium is due to is due to uterine contractions is due to a uterine contractions uterus will contract and empty the contents uterus will contract so that the cervix will open a little bit so that all that endometrium will be expelled out okay so expulsion of the uterine endometrium is due to uterine contractions which were bring these uterine contractions is because of oxytocin no these uterine contractions are because of a prostaglandin which is prostaglandin f2 which makes the uterus to contract so that the contents are expelled out okay now whenever there is a uterine contraction for the expulsion of these products there is a pain so usually normal menses normal menstruation is always associated with dis meno rhea dysmenorrhea okay normal menses regular periods are painful periods why because there is uterine contractions because of this prostaglandin f2 okay now guys let me uh, give you a quick summary in the second half of the menstrual cycle which is a luteal phase or a secretory phase what what are the events happening corpus luteum formation is happened corpus luteum is producing the progesterone corpus luteum is maintained by lh so lh is maintain the corpus luteum corpus luteum is mainly producing the progesterone as well as estrogen 
प्लस इनहिबिन ये इफ समवन आस्क यू व्हाट इज अ मेजर हार्मोन प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम कार्पस ल्यूटियम इट कार्पस ल्यूटियम इट्स द प्रोजेस्टेरॉन सो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज दिस प्रोजेस्टेरॉन डूइंग प्रोजेस्टेरॉन ब्रिंग्स द सेक्रेटरी चेंजेस इन द यूट्राइन एंडोमेट्रियम एंड द सेम प्रोजेस्टेरॉन प्रोडक्शन ओके सेम प्रोजेस्टेरॉन प्रोडक्शन विल बी मैक्सिमम ऑन डे 8 और डे 22nd ऑफ द मेंस्ट्रुअल साइकिल डे 8 आफ्टर ओव्युलेशन और डे 22nd ऑफ द मेंस्ट्रुअल साइकिल this progesterone will give the negative feedback after ovulation this progesterone will give the negative feedback to the fsh lh so that the lh levels will be going down if there is no lh corpus luteum cannot survive if corpus luteum cannot survive there is no progesterone if there is no progesterone i can say it like progesterone withdrawal because of this progesterone withdrawal there is shedding of the uterine endometrium later followed by expulsion of the uterine endometrium okay now concentrate this progesterone not only giving negative feedback for lh this progesterones are also giving negative feedback to fsh if there is a progesterone there is no fsh it means if there is no progesterone fsh will again comes comes into play in the second half of the menstrual cycle what's exactly happening at the end of the second half of the menstrual cycle to be more precise there is the degeneration of the corpus luteum if there is a degeneration of corpus luteum there is no progesterone if there is no progesterone what happens again fsh production will be there now this fsh what it will do it will again stimulate follicles okay again it will stimulate follicles so that again follicles will be producing estrogen and this estrogen will bring the proliferatory changes in the endometrium so what i want to put in your mind so next cycle begins okay so as the corpus luteum is getting degenerated no progesterone no progesterone means no negative feedback on fsh if there is no negative feedback on fsh what happens fsh again starts to raise in the blood and fsh will again stimulate the follicles and the new cycle begins okay now please keep these important points in mind okay the second half of the menstrual cycle is known as a luteal phase or you can call it even secretory phase now once concentrate on this graph okay or uh, two to three important mcqs you know will be they will be asking you from this graph okay they they will be giving you this graph and they will, okay for example they won't show you this lh and they will simply mark it and they will ask you what is this graph depicting okay this graph is for fsh lh estrogen they will ask something like that okay now once concentrate yeah see this is the first phase of the menstrual cycle see this is the first phase of the menstrual cycle which is the follicular phase in the follicular phase follicles are stimulated and they are producing what hormone estrogen guys remember i have said this estrogen will bring what changes estrogen will bring the proliferative changes in the uterine endometrium now what i want you guys to remember is these three graphs which are very very super important as the follicles are producing this estrogen so that the estrogen concentration the peak of estrogen concentration that is a 200 picogram per ml at this concentration see concentrate here especially i am highlighting in the pink okay this pink graph try to concentrate estrogen levels are keep on increasing in the follicular phase because of this estrogen concentration i have said estrogens will give the positive feedback for the lh now concentrate on this blue graph this estrogens will stimulate the lh release so that there is even lh surge okay estrogen peak is there that is stimulating the lh surge i have already said even before ovulation 
there is like you know lh is there before ovulation this lh will act on the granulosa cells and helps in the production of progesterone in the first half this low levels of progesterone will stimulate fsh release progesterones will give positive feedback for the release of fsh so concentrate guys in the green color even before ovulation you are having fsh surge so lh surge is there before ovulation fsh surge is there before ovulation and there is even estradiol peak is there before ovulation okay so what you have to keep in mind okay if you ask me what is the important mcq you have to keep in mind guys remember the moment okay this is the moment oh, lh is going to start increasing okay from that moment it is known as lh surge lh surge lh surge means a sudden rise in the lh a sudden rise in the lh now from the moment of lh surge to the ovulation how much time it takes what is the time period between lh surge and ovulation the time period is 32 to 36 hours okay very important mcq but if you ask once concentrate but if you ask this is the lh peak from the time of lh peak to the ovulation from the time of uh, lh peak to the ovulation what is the time required it is a 10 to 12 hours okay two important mcqs again in the next part we'll be discussing but try to remember from the lh peak to the ovulation 10 to 12 hours from the lh surge to the ovulation it is 32 to 36 hours okay next what else we have to uh, keep in mind see on the day on the 14th day because of uh, lh surge there is rupture of the graffarian follicles so just before ovulation just before ovulation what is the size of this graffian follicle before ovulation what is the size of this graffian follicle it is 18 to 20 mm okay the size of this graffian follicle is 18 to 20 mm a important mcq okay now what else we have to keep in mind discussing about the ovulation ovulation see a female will be having a dysmenorrhea by the time of menses okay that's normal because of the prostaglandin f2 contracting the uterine wall the page the female will be having a dysmenorrhea which is a normal thing but uh, some females can even experience the pain during the day of ovulation so day of ovulation means on the 14th day on the day of ovulation some females can even experience the pain okay why there is pain let me uh, give let me tell you in a brief way see a follicle even a follicle the graffarian follicle the the mature follicle it have its own blood supply whenever there is a rupture of this follicle there is a trickling of the blood into the peritoneal cavity and all this blood will be collected in the pouch of Douglas or we can call it a cul de sac. All this blood will go and cause the irritation of the local peritoneum so that even a female on the day of ovulation can feel pain. Some females, okay. So, this pain which is happening on the day of ovulation, or I can say a mid cycle pain, okay, mid cycle pain why because it's happening on the middle of the cycle on the day of ovulation this is known as anyone which is very very important known as middle okay middle smudge pain okay middle smudge pain okay i'm sorry for the spellings i'm not sure whether the smudge is uh, right or not but middle smudge pain is a mid cycle pain experienced by a female okay on the day of ovulation so after that what else you have to uh, keep in mind we have almost discussed everything we have discussed all the important events okay uh, let me uh, tell you one more important function guys concentrate here inhibin a once concentrate here okay this is the last topic inhibin a this inhibin a Inhibin A is produced from the corpus luteum. What is the exact function of this corpus uh, inhibin A? Even inhibin A gives the negative feedback. 
okay this uh, inhibin a will give the negative feedback for the release of fsh okay now why it is important guys remember at the end of the cycle in the second half of the menstrual cycle at the end corpus luteum is getting degenerated if the corpus luteum is getting degenerated there is a no progesterone if there is no progesterone there is no negative inhibitory effect on fsh so that again fsh will come into the play again it will stimulate the follicle so that follicles will produce estrogen and the next cycle will start in the same way try to concentrate if there is a destruction of the corpus luteum okay if the follicle uh, if the if the corpus luteum is undergoing degeneration again there is no inhibin a if there is no inhibin a there is no negative feedback on the fsh again same just like before okay if there is no inhibin a there is there is no negative feedback on fsh if there is no negative feedback on fsh what happens fsh levels increase if fsh levels increase what happens that also further promote for the further promote the next cycle okay so i have discussed all the important points okay as we rather than speaking all the important concepts okay which you should know as a medical student okay if you know all these important points that's enough okay in the next half of this topic what does i mean i mean in the next part we'll be mainly discussing about the mcqs okay 30 to 40 mcqs will be discussed okay so the topic is completed thank you